Trenches, ba 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 da da da. Welcome to Into the Trenches. Welcome to Into the Trenches. Ba 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 da 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 da. Welcome to Into the Welcome to Into the Trenches. Trenches and trenches and Into the Trenches. Trenches, trenches, trenches. Into the trenches. Into the trenches. Into the trenches. Welcome to Into the Trenches. Welcome to Into the Trenches. Ah ah. Welcome to Into. Welcome to. Welcome to Into the Trenches. Welcome to Into the Trenches. Diggle 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 that was a pretty good intro. <laughs> We're going to totally use that. Um, this is our first vlog entry um, of our vlog cast. Do you still call it a podcast if it's video? Because pod, I why do they call it a pod? Vlog cast. I love that you, have we just started a thing? I hope not. But what podcast, <laughs> why do they, why was it ever called a? Because you're in your own little pod, little pod. at home and you're casting it out okay, to the world. Okay, so a broadcast is broad. Broad. And the pod is pod interesting yeah. okay okay but this um, is a vlog let's talk a little bit about <laughs> the origin of this show because we actually have audio recordings of into the trenches which is the mm -hmm. name of our show um but we just honestly we haven't released them yet because we're working on our branding gotta, and, gotta get uh, some logos going hashtag 2020 yeah it's been a bit uh, 2020 was a thing but it's yeah. not even 2020 anymore so well it kind of feels like it but we have <laughs> six episodes that are ready for you should mm -hmm. we i'm going to tell you who who we have as our amazing guests you better we have ben andrews ben andrews you know him you love him you're going to hear him then we circled back and made episode zero, episode zero which, is which just... was us we thought oh, a lot of people don't know who we are so we better start with us so it really will be us then Ben Andrews. Oh, you're doing the sequence. I know we talked to Jody Rothfield casting. Jody Rothfield. Local casting director. Mm -hmm. You want to hear from her, all of her words of wisdom. Our director, writer of Mr. Bleachers, Tim, Tim Carpenter. Carpenter. He joined Boom. us for the show. Yes, Lowell he... Dale. Lowell. Lowell's a fake. Lowell came by. We just can't help but cast him in everything we create. That's right. Thank you, Lowell. You're welcome. And last but not least, and this was something when David was actually oh, hired yeah. to do a, was it a self-tape? Yeah. It was a self-tape. In town from Chicago. Just needed some self-taping done. Yeah, out-of-town yeah. artist. And David said, Angela. What did I say? You approached me and said, Angela, oh. I think I have a gentleman we should put on into the trenches. I want to bring trenches. Mark Smith onto the podcast. Oh, and Mark, uh, Smith. Mark was amazing. And he sings on oh. the show. He's from, uh, I don't know if his roots are in Chicago, but he lives in Chicago. Actor, pastor. Yeah, you'll really be entertained by his episode. Anyway, so yes. I was going to talk about the parish, but that, that could go on for a while. Let's just talk about... Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the biz, because Into the Trenches, this is an industry podcast, and yeah. we're going to be talking about the biz. Let me talk to you about something that I heard as a headshot photographer. This Ooh, might dish. interest you, right? This tastes good, tastes mm -hmm. like photos. Mm. Um, so trending out of, for sure, Hollywood and possibly the other markets as well. Okay. This is almost like a throwback to an earlier style of mm -hmm. uh, actor marketing, mm -hmm. but uniformed headshots headshots with you in a uniform or a because costume makes it sound like halloween mm -hmm. but now managers agents the industry in general general mm -hmm. at least in larger markets uh actors are hearing things like yeah i i want you to go and get photos of you in a security guard outfit or scrubs or fill in the blank, right? So isn't that interesting? Because yeah. for years and years and years and all the time I've been an actor for, on camera at least, everybody's like, no, no, no. You don't wanna, you can't wait. You don't bring in a stethoscope. And the stethoscope might even be too much. But you know, right. if you wanna, if you know you're gonna be portraying pharmacists and doctors, etc., a headshot with a white, what is it called, a lab coat, right? Lab coat, that's, yeah. That's probably gonna be something you wanna consider. And this was, is that crazy or what? Well, and I was David mentioned this to me, and I was like, "What? That I remember that back in the day. You know, I've been doing this for a while, for a minute, uh, but I I was much younger then, so this would have been in the '90s. So I do remember one of my first shoots I did in when L you were like six. Oh, he's so sweet. No. So when she was six, they're like, no, young lady, no. you should put on like the uh, like a Sherlock Doogie Holmes Hauser. hat. They're like, the you're a doctor. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. I was in my 20s. But I remember uh, when I came back to Seattle, when I 
got some additional headshots because I was moving back from uh, LA into Seattle market. My agent then, when I first signed on with Topo Swope Talent, they're like, make sure you, you know, you get a good uh, executive look and corporate look. And so it was looks, but it still was leaning even more so into a costume kind of world. And then like David said, over the years, I feel like it's like, no, show us you. So when he mentioned this to me this morning, I said, well, that does make sense. When you think of markets, bigger markets than ours, than the Northwest, that have a lot of episodics. So it, let's say there's a lot of cop TV shows, or like you said, there's a ton of medical TV shows, that that does make sense that your agent or manager would want to be able to submit you and then immediately go, oh, okay, I see that energy and that vibe. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we'll be seeing it here in Seattle yet. I don't know. But interesting. Well, I submitted for a security guard job on a, a larger budgeted film mm -hmm. down in the Portland area, and I didn't have my security guard outfit on, and now my brain wants to know, did the person they hire, were they rocking the security guard look in their self-tape? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was happy huh. to get the audition, and you know and I know that I don't have security guard headshot, but it's just very curious because I love... Uh, Historically, I've loved playing uh, cops and detectives, but even like a beat cop, I mean, I can look like a detective mm -hmm. without having to go to the costume shop and oh, yeah. get something with a badge, right? Yeah. But to literally, if I was going out for cop one, cop six, uniformed police officer, whatever, I'd, ha I'd have to go get some wardrobe. Maybe I will. I will let you know. How about this question for you? Mm -hmm. Let's say you get another audition. Why not reach out to your agent and say, hey, would you check in and see if they'd like to see me more in uniform for this role? <laughs> reach out to my agent? Yeah. My agent. I love my agent. <laughs> she, but she might go, David, that's a crazy idea. Where are you getting your information? Because believe me, hear me now, believe me later, mm. Seattle's always a little bit behind the trends. Shocking, right? It's a little bit shocking, yeah? Because even when I started shooting headshots here in the studio and colorful backgrounds, especially for commercial headshots, uh, as far as I know, I was one of the first people in town who was doing this. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, some people are like, oh, what's David doing with the colorful backside? Guys, come on. People, people. Let's, let's take a look at the industry trends. So Seattle, we know, in my opinion anyway, is always a bit behind. Mm. So I imagine if I float this idea to my agent, Melissa Baldoff, Big fish Northwest talent. They're the best. I mean, Topo's good too. Right? Uh, there's Topo, a lot of good. There's Topo, a lot of great agents. Hello, Tim and Topo. Thank you. Yeah, they're really. But what too. I was going to say is, but, like, but she might think she, I'm crazy. She might she think might you're go, crazy. You However, like I reach out to Tim at my agency, Topo Soap Talent, and I've asked him some crazy stuff. Like, could you just ask the client this? And I said, and let him know it's me asking. I don't care. But it's just again, there are there are middle person, mm -hmm. our agents. So yeah, you guys, don't be afraid to ask. The worst they'll say is, no, I'm not going to do that or uh, yeah I already asked and it's this answer I mean sure. knowledge is power they may say I don't think you need to do that but yeah. it, it doesn't hurt to ask and that's a really yeah. great point about communication in general is mm -hmm. that there are no such there's no such thing as a dumb question just ask now that I've planted this seed in your brain mm -hmm. remember in this small market or if you're a younger newer actor and you're going in for a lot of day player roles under fives especially under fives where you're just a yeah. You know, a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, cop one, all of those things that are clearly stereotyped or arc. Well, I think they're stereotypes more than archetypes. But with those kinds of distinctions, maybe it's time to start thinking about this even in Seattle. Get a, get a photo taken with that lab coat. I don't know. I think it's also for all of you guys watching, because we might have some of you watching who are outside of Seattle, outside of Washington, but still in a smaller market. That's what we're talking about. These smaller markets, we're all going to be a little behind the bigger markets who are kind of creating the trends. So that's what we mean by that. But here's the other thing that I always tell our students, David mm -hmm. tells them as well, for self-taping or even now, the way of auditioning is either self-tape or via Zoom, ask yourself, what's going to help me bring this character to life? So even if they don't see my feet and I'm doing some kind of powerhouse lawyer role maybe or uh, uh, executive role, I might put on my four-inch heels because it's just going to make me feel differently there right. in front of the camera. And if you're going to be a detective or more of a buttoned up, then your wardrobe should speak that anyway. So it's kind of the same thing as to prop or not to prop. When you do a self-tape or a live Zoom audition, you really want to avoid props. But if there's a phone that's a prop. We don't want to see you do it. Hi, boop, 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 right? 
get your cell phone out. Yeah, yeah. even there, so, even that, there's exceptions to those kind of rules in yeah. general because every single casting director might be different. They might have their own opinions about props. And a lot of times actors are making their own decisions based on their instincts. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully when you get those breakdowns, because that's where we're living now, we're not living in the time where you can go into an audition and they'll give you a prop. Mm -hmm. Commercial auditions, historically, in my opinion, you go in and they have stuff there. They have a laptop or they have stuff for you inter to interact with when they want you to. But now when we're taping at home, we're left to our own devices. And a lot of times we just don't have enough information. So if you're lucky, you're getting really detailed breakdowns that address this prop issue, because I think props, a lot of times can be super duper helpful. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to say check out Vanny Poye, P-O-Y-E-Y, -E I believe. She's an amazing headshot photographer in North Hollywood, I believe, but she just posted a blog about what I was just talking about, mm -hmm. uniforms for headshots. Check it out. Read up. Let us know your thoughts. This is going to live on our website, possibly on YouTube. It's going oh, to be yeah. dropped on Facebook. So leave us a comment. Connect with us. Any parting words for the peeps? Uh, we didn't talk about the parish. So some of you might be watching going, wait, what was that? So we did shout out Mr. Bleachers, which is our third feature film that we have. We still have a couple days we got to shoot, so it's not in the can yet. But this guy over here at The Parish is all wrapped up. We got distribution. It's coming out in March. And the reason we didn't spend a lot of time on it today is because we're doing back-to-back -back interviews. And you guys can just look it up online and see interviews with us, interviews with the writer Todd Downing, interviews with Bill Oberst Jr., Sanaya mm -hmm, Lutz, mm -hmm. Jen Hammond. Indie film, you guys. You can make your own film. Do it yourself. Don't wait for others, especially now in this pandemic. Stay creative and hashtag don't wait create because Mama DeMarco says so. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Be mighty.